Pharaoh, Bellius, Baul? What sort of beings are Antilochia anyway? They are the oldest intelligent life forms on Terpalumarase. So they aren't monsters? They aren't. It's said that they have a higher level of awareness than humans, though they don't have a civilization. Shiver me timbers! The Entelakeo are smart! The reports we get from Baul are pretty accurate. He's a smart boy. What are you? Who are you paying your respects to? An old friend, a dear comrade who shared my cause and gave his life in battle. Battle? Was he in a guild? Why would you think so? Well, Imperial Knights who fall in the line of duty are given a state funeral. This has nothing to do with the Empire or the guilds. What's that supposed to mean? Those institutions are nothing more than man-made trivialities. Is he the reason you've been drifting around so long? That is none of your concern. Hey, no need to get testy. Just whose grave is this anyway? It's not a knight or somebody from a guild. That's gotta mean... I know some people can't afford a burial, but why put them in a place like this? Estelle, what are you doing? We may not know whose grave this is, but this feels like the right thing to do. Might as well. Okay, let's head back down. I think we're done here. We'll destroy them in no time! You got anything up there?
We should really enjoy these little times together. Shouldn't you be using this a little more? Thank you, thank you.
delivered the book, just like you asked. Here, look. This is proof we finished the job. Oh, indeed. That's Novus is all right. Wow, thanks so much for your help. And here is the pay I promised you. If you ever need anything else, don't hesitate to call on Brave Vesperia. Yes, of course. See you later. A symbol of their friendship. How touching. I wonder what kind of book it was. It was just a normal book. Looked like it had something to do with economics. Did you look inside, Raven? So what if I did? I mean, it's fine, but what if the client had hidden something private in the book? Oh, it's no big deal. 
No harm done if it didn't get in the way of the job. An economics book, huh? That didn't sound too racy. It would have been funny if some romance novel was the proof of two guys' friendship. Really? Anyway, I guess we're done with our first job with the Union. So this is what it's like to work in a guild? Yeah. If we were the Hunting Blades, we'd probably get jobs to exterminate monsters. Fortune's Market usually does stuff like transport products over long distances. So, Brave Asperia is in the delivery business then? Well, we... uh... We can think it over while we try out a few different kinds of work. Yeah, sure!
Are they all together? The bigger the bunch, the weaker the monster. That was too short. Here it is, darling. Your very own Everlight necklace. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Where did you ever find it? Well, you see... Oh, wow, what a miracle. Thank goodness. Now for your reward. Oh, your love is reward enough. Settle down, old man. Rihanna! You! Where have you been? You're that man from Heliord. Hey! You! Rihanna, how do you know these people? They were looking for my necklace. What? Oh, so that's why you were... That's right. So who the hell are you? I'm an old friend of hers. An old friend, huh? 
You know, you are really annoying. Could you just shut up for a minute, please? All right, I can take a hint. Where were you all this time? I've been looking for you. I've been out looking for your necklace. The necklace that you said was a memento of your father, but I couldn't find it. Don't worry. There's a reason that I wanted to find it myself. In the end, I had to get some help from these people, but... I wanted to be the one to give you this, as a symbol of our engagement. Huh? Engagement? You did that for me? I think we should be on our way. Oh? But what about our payment? Consider it a wedding present. Right, Carol? He's gone. Huh? He was right here a moment ago. Maybe something came up again. Hey, old man. Let's go. Huh? Oh, right. Are you done? Sorry, I remembered I had to do something. So did you get the payment? Nah, no payment this time. What? What are you talking about? How can you not take payment for a guild job? Let's just say this job was a wedding present. A wedding present? Huh? You mean Professor Rihanna is... Professor? Uh, well, um... You did say that you knew her from a guild you used to be in. Actually, she was sort of my teacher in the guild. She was famous for being really strict. I know I got my share of beatings. Hmm. So that's why you didn't come with us to meet her. Well, no biggie. No, no biggie? Yes, biggie! You didn't get a payment! There is something besides payment that I'd like to settle. Huh? What do you mean, Judith? So far, we've delivered stuff and found stuff. Two totally different kinds of work. What is Brave Asperia for? What does this guild I belong to do? She's got a point. What are you doing all this for? Money? You like doing it? Looking at it from the outside? I can't tell what you want to do. Uh, well, uh, uh... I mean, I'm not a member or anything, so whatever. Okay, let's just say this is a trial period while we're figuring that out. Huh? Yeah, okay. If we can't come up with an answer right now, we'll just think on it for a while. Right. So this is where Pharaoh is? Should be. I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. I hope nothing bad will happen. What if he suddenly attacks us? I can't make any guarantees. I don't think we'll have a say in the matter. That just means we need to do our best so nothing bad happens. Carol, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I should go. Pharaoh sure did pick a bleak place to live in, don't you think? They say this area used to be covered in lush greenery. Why did it turn into this rocky desert? Hmm, I don't know that much. Estelle, are you really going to meet him? Even though you could be killed? Yes, I've already made peace with this decision. Rita, you've been acting a little funny ever since hearing Judy's story on the ship. Do you have a problem with meeting Pharaoh? I just think it'll be hard on her to hear what he has to say. But it's too late to turn back now. We've come this far after all.
Well, he doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he's off somewhere taking a nap. Pharaoh? You are here, aren't you? Insipid poison. You appear before me at last. So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Estelle! Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me. I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the Child of the Full Moon. Huh? The power of the Child of the Full Moon stimulates the air crene more than any Blastia. Huh? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia, she must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air, which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then... I... It is as she has said. With each use of her power, the Child of the Full Moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. If the problem's with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. That's right. We can't let anyone else handle it. The gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. You don't honestly think that everything's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh. At Heliord, I stopped myself. And again at Dawngrest, I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like a Blastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind. But why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? 
It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? We have endured the anxiety of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. Such words mean nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment. Pharaoh, please listen. The important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air, correct? We still have time left to search for such a thing. Judith! And if... If the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit, I will kill her as promised. You should have no complaint with this. Hey, Judith, are you serious? I'm sure brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens, right? What? I... um... Yeah, yeah, of course we will! Well, score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem and bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. If we give it all we've got and still blow it, then you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. You have changed. If you were still as before... Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful, though, that time is fleeting. Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. There exist those who have inherited the sins of the past. If any yet can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is they. He's gone! Bye-bye! Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri. Judith. You too. No problem. But hey... What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. Man, I was really worried there for a while. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in- Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff. You're pretty gutless for an old man. Jeez, Patty, you've really got nerves of steel. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, he'd have attacked us immediately. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. That sounds like you. Maybe. But what are we going to do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air's causing. And that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to be at square one. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. It'd be a lot easier if there were more cities. The hidden city of Miorzo. It is far older than Timza. The first Blastia also originated there. Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Miorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Critian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. Money seems to disappear before you know it. No, it disappears because you use it. 
Sure, but if you only use a little at a time, you don't realize how much you're spending. I guess we've been spending a little too much. What do you mean? We need to spend more! Really? But why? The more gold we spend, the more it comes back to us. And it brings its friends, too. R really How interesting. Huh? Rita, your name's on this money. Exactly! I've been writing my name on our gold so we'll know when it comes back to us. And when it does come back, I bet it'll have doubled at least. So go on, use it! <laughs> what a lovely little fairy tale.